I think we'll start this out with an example. What the hell are changes? You're going to have a cat. I'm a bit loud. You grab by the function. Qualifier. Yeah, we might be wrong. We're funny, but not always. Uh, we're gonna drop it. Target behaviors. I think. Wait a minute. I don't know. Target behaviors. Yes. We have to think about target behaviors. Um, we all know what they are. It's the behavior that you're going to choose to fix or to fix. It's a totally inappropriate way to think about behavior, but I do anyway. Um, uh, sorry. <laughs> so we have to think about target behaviors. We have to pick. We're going to choose one, so on and so forth. It's the behavior we want to change. We want to try to habilitate the person. Remember, habilitation is simply just teaching that person, in other words, to expand their repertoire to maximize reinforcement and minimize punishment. You got short term and long term, all that, anyway, all that stuff. So maximize reinforcement, minimize punishment, that's habilitation. So when we choose a target behavior to habilitate, when we want to try to get people to improve, then the end result is that we have some considerations we need to take into account. Um, the first thing is social relevance, right? So we need to choose a behavior that's socially relevant for this kiddo, uh, or adult, or that. You know, the, the examples always end up going with kiddos, but they don't have to be. I don't want you to keep getting sucked into the idea of just that this applies to kids and dogs. It applies to everybody, all right? Uh, the examples are sometimes easiest when you're thinking about kids, but it doesn't have to be. Um, so with social relevance, we've got a lot of things we want to worry about. Number one, is the behavior that you're trying to teach age appropriate? Is this a, is this a skill that should be done by a three-year-old, or is this a skill that should be done by a 30-year-old? You know, I think that as a parent, that's one of the more challenging things sometimes. You got a teenager running around, you want them to be adult, right? And like an adult, but they're 13 or they're 14 or they're 15. Let's be, let's keep the behaviors age appropriate, right? Um, so, other important ones here, cusps, right? So, is the behavior we're gonna teach a behavioral cusp? In other words, if we teach this one response, does that then generalize to a new setting, and more importantly, when they have that new skill, does that open up the door for more skills? You know, I think one of the good ones is attending, right? So if I'm teaching somebody to attend, that teaches them a skill that can be useful in many environments, right? Um, another one would be a pivotal behavior, which is very similar to a cusp in the sense that the training of one skill affects other behaviors, right? But what we're talking about here is that training of one particular skill will affect other responses indirectly how they may try some modifications to other responses based on the uh, based on the experience or the repertoire that they have now developed with another response, okay? So, pause, running on idea. <laughs> now that that's on film, all right, I'm back, all right. Um, so is this behavior a necessary prerequisite for other ones? I mean, if I want to learn, if you know, let me think. we got a river around us, kind of on both sides. We're on Canada Island right now. And if if, if I want to learn, if I want to swim, if I want to, if I want to kayak, I should probably know how to swim. Maybe it'd be a good idea, right? Necessary prerequisite. Maybe not the true necessary prerequisite, but you get why I give the example. So those types of behaviors are good ones to change as well. Oh, if you're gonna reduce a behavior, let's think about, uh, so we're gonna suppress one, right? So punishment, right? We like to think of it as suppression a lot in the field because it doesn't really completely get rid of a behavior, it just suppresses it for a while. So if we're gonna suppress a behavior, we better make sure we address the damn function. And by that I mean that stuff's gonna pop right back up in there, so you better teach a socially appropriate response or one that's functional for the person. So you're gonna suppress the behavior, you got a set of reinforcers that are sitting there that are trying to get to that behavior that's been suppressed, right? So you better put one in its place that attaches to these reinforcers. Now you locked out one in place, you got yourself a DRA, a DRI, whatever the heck we're talking about, but the point being that you're gonna suppress one, you're gonna put a replacement behavior in. Another issue, we, don't, we are not just talking about talking. I can talk, and that's one type of response, but talking isn't doing, knowing isn't doing. Just because you know something doesn't mean you do it. Look at all the MDs out there that still smoke cigarettes. In fact, I'll bet a bunch of you smoke cigarettes or whatever it is. As a result, you probably know that. I bet you can tell me all the bad things that will happen to you if you continue to smoke, but yet you continue to smoke. Doing and talking are different things. So our behaviors that we're concerned about, the ones that we need to focus on aren't just 
telling me that you're going to change. I want to see you actually change. Okay? I'm going to check on something else again. <laughs> Today on the Hagerism in the Park. And one last one here before we get into another subtopic. Um, we're going to focus on behaviors, not outcomes. All right, so maybe my outcome is to lose some weight. I'm getting a little tight in my suit here. Oh, right. So if I'm going to run and lose some weight, is that a behavior? You better be shaking your head. You bet right now, shake your head. Out, it is not losing. You are nodding your head. I said shake your head. There you go. All right, well done. All right, reinforcers, clappy, clappy. Anyway, um, so <laughs> outcome, losing weight is an outcome. It's not a behavior. What do I need to do? I need to exercise. I need to eat healthy. And maybe I need to try that was kind of weird but anyway you get the idea if i can teach myself to exercise and i can teach myself to eat healthier and i can engage in appropriate responses that might lead to weight loss which is an outcome right so we focus on behaviors not outcomes so one of the other things we need to worry about then when we're choosing our target behaviors is uh, the relevance of behavior rule right so we're not going to teach somebody just because we can teach them something in the lab here in the, in the clinical setting or whatever. We're going to teach something that's relevant for them. In other words, we're going to teach them a behavior that, that has reinforcers available in the natural context, right? So we're going to teach them a skill that becomes useful for them, relevant, because in the natural environment, it's going to get reinforced. We don't want some artificial thing where they're just getting behavior for behavior's sake. We want to make this stuff functional for them. So, we also have to worry about prioritizing. So we've just talked about some of the considerations with the types of behavior that we should choose. We want to think about prioritizing as well. So number one, A number one, is this behavior harmful to the individual or someone else? If it is, fix it now, now. And I mean now, and use whatever technique you've got available to do it. Fix it before it stop that behavior from happening before somebody gets hurt, all right? Um, is this behavior going to increase the amount of reinforcement in this person's overall world? Uh, really big, important thing, right? So. Are we going to jack up the amount of reinforcement that is available for this person in the natural world by teaching this new response? Similar sort of thing, right? Um, we always want to focus on that. So, Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so, shit. Oh, is the person going to have an opportunity to engage in this behavior frequently in the real world, right? So, is there going to be a lot of reinforcers? It's really similar to the last. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to do this one at a time. All right. I just. This is known as the BCBA long shuttle run. Long standing and skill development. Long, I got two. Long standing and skill development. All right, so how long standing has the behavior been? If it's been there a long time, maybe it's something you need to change, or if it's new, but it's really serious. You're sitting at two and a half minutes of long standing. Sorry. So is it long standing behavior? Has it been a problem for a long time, or is it not, right? Um, you can argue both ways on this one, right? If it's long standing and harmful, you better fix it. Uh, but if it's brand new, it might be really easy to fix, okay? Um, which made me forget my other one. I have a new behavioral problem today as I can't remember, seem to remember my lectures, which is why this is going to be the most cut up video you've seen out of all of our behavior based stuff. I abide. <laughs> I think we need to move our book closer. We should move the book closer. It's dry there. Right there. <laughs> oh God. priority will this new behavior teach the, uh, shit will it priority number 453 that I can't remember today holy cow my priority should be learning these things um, now is the skill that you're going to teach them that you want to teach them or is the problem behavior um, is, is addressing that and habilitating that response is that going to help them become more independent individuals in their world there's another priority that you want to focus on <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Will changing this behavior produce reinforcement for other people? Will changing this behavior reduce oh, negative interactions with other folks, maybe reduce the amount of punishers that the person's experiencing? Hopefully increase reinforcers, which is another priority. What's the probability of success? Do you think you can pull it off? <laughs> if you can, maybe point, you should no. try. What's that? At this point, no. no. <laughs> and the very most important one for us here at PsychCore is how much will it cost to change the behavior? Um, is it gonna cost an entire lens because it's raining a bit today, as you can see from my suit coat? Um, and you should see how Brad has the lens covered. But anyway, so are fixing these behaviors, um, what's the priority for fixing all these responses, right? Um, it's not just as easy as I wanna fix the behavior. So anyway, with all the editing and running back and forth, and I'm out of breath, and I think that's enough for now. I'll see you again with another episode another time. Thanks.